Hello, science fiction lovers. I'm Peg, and welcome to my channel where I read and talk about just about anything uh, relating to science fiction, which I love. Um, I'm continuing working my way through this huge anthology that was published a few months ago where uh, Gardner Duzois uh, presents the stories that he considers the best from all of last year. And they're all, I have to admit, pretty good. The one I'm going to read and want to talk about today is called Elves of Antarctica by Paul McGauley. Now, I started reading this and it somehow seemed familiar. So I looked in the front and I realized all of these stories have been chosen, have been published first in other either magazines or anthologies or short story collections. They've been chosen because they were the best from there. So I realized this had been previously published in a book I just talked about yesterday in my themed anthology talk. It's been, it was published in this work um, called, what is it called? Drowned Worlds. Um, and I decided to go ahead and read it in this since it was especially uh, chosen for this. And I did learn after I talked about themed anthologies yesterday, I began to wonder, does the editor find a subject he's interested in and go out and find stories that are about that subject, which seems like it would be very hard, or in the second case is what he actually does, I read about, he decides what subject he wants people to write about, and he obviously knows a lot of good authors, so he puts out the call to them, and I suppose some sort of deadline to write a story. In this case, it was to write with uh, the theme of the Anthropocene. Now, the Anthropocene, I learned, is that time in which the activities of human beings begin to impact and affect this, the uh, Earth. Obviously, we are in who knows what part of that uh, time and age now. Uh, but that word was used a lot, and, and uh, I guess it applies to all the stories in here. Um, as I said, this was written by Paul McCauley, who uh, in his former life, uh, before he became a famous author, was a research biologist, which it's, it's interesting. It seems like many science fiction authors were scientists of some sort before, and I think the the bi biology aspect does show up in his stories. Um, he has quite a bit of history with uh, science fiction. He wrote a novel called Fairyland a couple decades ago that won both the uh, Clark Award and the Campbell Award. And he just last year wrote a book called uh, Something Coming Through, a novel. And I realized uh, when I looked it up that it, I actually already have it on my Kindle, as I do have a lot of books I haven't read yet, and I really would like to read it now. Uh, and the sequel has just recently been published, which is called Into Everywhere. Okay, uh, this, book, this story, The Elves of Antarctica, takes place in, guess what, Antarctica, and uh, the main character is Mike, a young man who is a helicopter pilot. He works for a company that is nonprofit type company that is supposedly trying to repair some of the ecological damage that that uh, humans have caused. Um, he really kind of seems to to like Antarctica. I tried to. I don't really know a lot about it, but. Uh, he, because he can fly a helicopter, he can get around um, many of the places that some people don't see. You can see a lot of the countryside. And uh, it seems that it must be take place quite a while or, or at least sometime in the future because it seems like a lot of the, a lot of the places no longer have ice and snow over them. In fact, that fact uh, enables him to see this uh, what's called 
um, the elf elf rocks. There's huge rock boulder type rocks that appear all over all over the place in certain destinations that have some sort of strange writing on them that the local myth is or talk is that they were put there or, or written on by elves and um, evidently that mythology is also takes place in is prevalent in Iceland and there's some people from there who compare it to some stories about Iceland. Um, anyway, so it's part of a kind of a sport, leisure sport, for people to go around and there's maps of the different rocks and where they are and you can go around to different parts of it. So Mike, um, in his free time, makes it a mission to try to go to all the different rocks. And as he goes on through these rocks, a certain particular mood comes up. Now, I believe this author is really good with the, the mood portrayal. It's quite stark and cold and uh, kind of a feeling of myth being in the background. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's also other uh, um, another character in the story who's an older man who seriously believes that the there were elves and he's kind of spent his life studying these rocks and, and animals that used to be in Iceland. And uh, they run into each other one time out in the middle of nowhere while Mike is out looking at rocks. And uh, as usual in short stories, there's no real ending. But it, it does contain the feeling uh, of hopefulness that because things were here before, before all the ice and snow, etc., there's a possibility that life will keep, even though it's changing, will go on and there will be things here again, even though it's warmer, even though it's not as icy. Uh, and as I said, there seems to be, this seems to get, rather than a pessimistic tone, this seems to give everyone some hope and optimism. Uh, I would really like to hear what some of you other people think about this story, if you agree with me on this. Uh, short, I, that's what I like about short stories, is you never can really know exactly what to think about them. But anyway, that's my thoughts on this interesting story. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.